There was no other wallpaper. There just wasn't. Hi. I'm Zeos Pantera, the host of Inner Fetish. And here we're we're here not with the Dunu, but the Dunu Hyper Glaciers, which is their flagship. This is 1300 Smackaroons. I don't put the gemstone in the title on this channel. Just gotta know that this is Dunu, a brand that's pretty synonymous with me for being fucking fantastic. Uh, throwing all the shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Oh, it's sticky. It is a sticky wall. Um, single dynamic. Wait, nine drivers. So a single dynamic, four BAs, four electrostats using uh, Dunu's patented custom. Can I go faster? I need to go fast. They use this thing. Where is it? That. They use an actual transformer for the electrostats, and there's four of those. And they've got a four way crossover for the things with the stuff. And none of this matters. None of that. The price matters. The fact that this is serial number 406, and yet there are zero reviews on Hi Fi Go, it boggles the mind because Dunu never fucks around. In fact, here, these, you see these occasionally, probably all the time. Main channel, these are the Dunu Zen Pros. Look, it even has Zeos inscribed on it, because I love these so goddamn much. Um, and these are the stethoscopes of the audio world. They're just a single dynamic. There's $900, and they do a fantastic job of letting you know what your amplifier sounds like. Um, the biggest flaw on these is that they're MMCX, but we don't have to worry about that, because no modern IM would ever do that. Oh, no. Oh, it's MMCX. All right, we're going to get over this right this second. The biggest problem with MMCX is that when you take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on, eventually it wears out way faster than any other connection type. Do we all agree? Are there arguments in the comments? These are MMCX, but luckily they come with like a hyper cable. I'm going to call it a hyper cable because it's a Duna Hyper. They, I'm sure they talked about it in the description. I don't give a shit. This cable is fabric and thick, like headphone thick. But like, it behaves in this way that's just like, oh yeah, flagship. You got your interchangeable ends. All the right angle Dunu ends fit on this. It locks in place. They've gone with white on this because Glacier. Uh, white fabric here to this split that is like a beautifully stainless steel. Just like, It's got like a grippy handle with the serial number. It says Dunu into two only slightly smaller fabric runs. If we compare it to, I have the only other MMCX cable I'd use is this one from um, Viking Weave, which he sent to me a while ago, and I haven't had any MMCX IM to try it with. But now I've got these. So they're the only ones worthy of a Viking Weave cable, but I like this cable so much that I'll link to this, but I'll be, hold on. I could also get my uh, Purple Asylum cable with the head switch, and if I want to do MMCX. But, so slightly thinner, you got this nice, I think this is aluminum, maybe it's all aluminum. I don't know, it feels kind of like stainless steel, but it might be aluminum. And then this slider's here that goes up into the perfect little arcs over the ears, and this, this can now adjust for this massive honk of metal. It looks like a scene from Terminator 2 after they shattered the liquid Terminator T-1000. And it's just a chunk of metal, um, which goes with the Glacier theme. Hand-polished stainless steel. Uh, these feel expensive. They look expensive. The wire feels expensive all the accessories it comes from comes with including this literally little miniature leather and well probably fake leather and canvas with the bag inside of it stitched in here little pull sack like what the fuck is this i love it that's the bag it comes with so you're not traveling with that little footy bag for the little individual sides that are not clanking into each other do new cloth you got a little little lavalier clip to hold the hold the wire, which is actually a really nice one. You hear the quality of it? I could hear the quality of that. Comes with this leather strap holder with Dunu in it, so you clip that into your wire, and then you can clip this around and hook it again. In case you want to go leather, you get the new candy ear tips, which for some reason they've given a 
quite thick and murderable stainless steel thing that says candy ear tips for large, mediums, and smalls. It actually had another set of mediums installed on the unit, so you get two sets of mediums, a set of smalls and a set of large. These are the only ones that come on this sort of display. You get your little stupid airplane adapter. I've never used one of these. Has anyone in the comments used one of these ever? Like literally ever. You get other tips. You get these um, Dunu ball tips. You get a single set of medium foams. You get a couple other tips that have really long sockets. Like this small set has really long extensions on the back, but the other ones don't seem to have an extension. And then you get not standard Duno SS. These are the clearer, softer ones. I forget the model number of these. I'll try to link them in the description. But these are like the Duno SS where they are a square and get really seated in your ear. They're just clear and see-through. And you get that all the way up to XL size which I use an XL on the right and a standard large in the left. So that works perfectly for me. So you got a fucking, also a brush. So you got a fuck ton of things and this thing and like the box, I wish, I wish you can go watch the unboxing, but it's probably going to be about three months before that gets through the process. But like I pull it out and there's these other sections and I pull this out and you lift it out and it's like, it's just all the IEMs with your plaque that says 00406, do new 22 years. And I'm like, well, this box is too big to just have the IMs in it. And so I yanked the foam out to discover it is a solid block of foam that was taped in. So this entire box is just to deliver you the IMs with its own little magnets and everything. So unboxing experience, 10 out of 10. Planetary waste, also 10 out of 10. Um, let's plug this back in. I was playing with amplifiers. I've got the TA, TA66 here, which is a tube amp, pure tube. And then I've got uh, the VMVP2, which is like the GOAT. I brought back out the Gishelli Arkle 3 Pro because it's also a GOAT. And a third GOAT, I've got so many GOATs. I've got the LA90, which is like a fucking speaker amp, which I usually use unfettered to power extremely hard to drive headphones. However, gold planar uh, amp slash ribbon interface, which converts it so I could use a heavy duty speaker amp through this, actually through the Fosse also, because I get cool views. This was my go-to combo. Like, and it's not like these need a ton of power, but they need just like a little bit more than you'd expect. And it may have a really odd thing going on with the impedance. I actually don't know the impedance of these. Let me give a quick check to see if it just pops up. I think if I search, how would I do that? Control F, Alt two three four, enter. Alt two three four, by the way, is the ohm symbol, so it's it's not what it is. Let's just try ohm. Ohm. Nope, the word ohm does not appear. Reviews description. Anyway, I don't know what the actual ohms impedance is of this. I usually don't have to worry too much when they give you a cable this nice, because that was one of the things that blew me away about the Letshore Cadenza is that there were eight ohms. And a cable made a difference because something so small and so efficient, but having such low impedance meant if you had a, an ohms load of one on your cable, you're adding like 15% change to what was going on. So it's good that it has a good cable, although I'd work for those either. Either way, like I was saying, these amps good. This amp here, while Evan Topaz, probably the one I would stick with. I guess we have to talk about sound. Let's let's install these monsters again. And again, these feel substantial. They fit beautifully. It's like OH-10. Anyone who ever had OH-10 knows that a big heavy IM isn't necessarily the end of the world. As long as it fits properly and the wire sits over your ear properly, which thanks to MMCX, you can angle that wire however you need, get it fitting perfectly. And then we come and we're gonna unpause this. Oh, fuck. I'm back in here, aren't I? All right. You ever have a bad trip? You could be honest with me. This is YouTube. No one's actually reading the comments. Certainly not your boss. If you've, I've never personally had a bad trip, but I've dabbled in the, in the finer things that you get passed around. And I imagine that if you were wearing these IMs and Asterix schematic tiles came on in your IMs while you were a little bit off your rocker, you'd fucking freak out because these 
it's been a hot minute since I've done like a flagship IM. I've done a couple like recently, like thousand dollar, nine hundred dollar ones, like the audio one, the the monarchs and stuff. But Duno is different because Duno usually has a very very straightforward sound. Certainly the the things the uh, Zen Pros are basically like flat and level and dead, and only give you the sound of the amplifier. And I I feel like because I read the bullet points on the site. I feel like what Dunu did for the glaciers is the boss man came in and he took out a magic marker and he went to the, the board and he went natural sound stage. And they threw the fucking thing down and left. And that's all they had to work with. Because the first thing I noticed when I put these IEMs in was a hit play and nothing's here. Nothing is here. Nothing is up close. Nothing's in your face. It all starts away. Can't go too far. That would be uh, bad. But it all starts just away. And you're like, ooh, this is... Ooh. I am not in the music. I'm not being assaulted by the music. I'm surrounded by it. They have fucking knocked all the park balls out of the park ball stadium with soundstage. It's it's actually kind of distracting in a way, but in a good way. Here's the thing. I have like $5,000 IMs that are flagships and this is their pinnacle of what they're doing. And, they, and so many of them don't relax and let you just breathe it in, and these fucking do. The Bob Ross Tropical Beach is perfect for something called the Glacier because it's this weird, like, I don't think of cold and, like, stark. I was going to find, like, a Weiss wallpaper, and I'm like, no, 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 no. This is just, this is more than one thing is happening here, thus when else will I get to use two girls in the background? But there's just like this, I don't think this IEM had a game plan other than be the biggest, smoothest fucking luxury IEM ever. And it wins. This replaces the Kanira Nana for me. Because the, near, the Nana, not my tuned Nana, my tuned Nana, which by the way drops on sale occasionally for like 600 bucks, if you want to look at that. But my tuned Nana, I put towards like, let's get more detail to it. Let's get it a little bit of less away away from like the relaxed sound and try to get it more, more like real visceral. But the original Nana, no matter what revision you went through, was always like the chill one. It was $900 and chill. Netflix and chill? Nah, motherfucker, $900 and chill. What does that mean? I don't know. I made it up. Spend $900 on a piece of a gear and then chill with it. Very few things allow you to do that. Maybe a tube amp would probably come in handy. But you're getting up into the eye uh, and the headphones and things and everything gets serious. We're starting to get serious now. And as much as Dunu probably takes this very seriously, I'm going to guide you. Because this is a spiritual headphone or I am in-ear monitor, I suppose. It doesn't sound like it was designed to compete with other aggressive, like listen to how good we could make an IM IMs. Hyper, hell no. These are the opposite of hyper. These are the most fucking, they're amazing, but they're chill. Uh, the birds and the screaming bears and I'm still on Asterix, Shadow Class McTales. I wish you could hear this. What is that creature? I'm having a freak out. I'm literally having a freak out. Any song that uses any sort of soundstage to like just try to be big, even the doors. I think I have some doors on here. Hold on. This is my specific uh, sound demo playlist. I know I got at least one doors song on here, right? Am I that bad? I'm terrible. Let's go to the old sound demos. I have it on there. There you go. Moonlight Drive, a version one from the doors. I'm in a big hall. 
and there's just like there's it's happening but the echo behind it is just fucking massive just 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 this this there's no more words it's just hand motions of sounds occurring and exploding around me this is fantastic this is exactly what i'd i couldn't have hoped for a better sound because i didn't know what to expect you know i know what dunu does with their with their single dynamics and i know i like the soft ears twilight probably more than i like those and that's just sort of like that same natural lightweight like like clean and i'd almost not even call these na i said natural on the bullet point but they're better than real life. How's that? I could take as many speakers and as many treated rooms as I want and play them, and they would never sound as good as it does on the Dunu Glaciers. It, like, pushes past the layers of, of fuzz in your brain and gets it right inside there. Oh, shit. Harold Faltermeyer. Top Gun Anthem. The bell and the I'm having an emotional reaction to the Top Gun theme. Right now, as we sit here talking to you, not even blasting it either. Like I, I start every IM review if I can at like zero volume. And I just wear them for a little bit. Just so it's like it's not this new thing. It just give it give it a minute. Two minutes. Just sitting in your ears. But even the $1,000 P2 at the very bottom of the volume still leaks a little bit of volume. And it was enough for me to hear how good these IEMs were. Like, at zero. Off. I wasn't even playing them, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, I'm going to like these. Then I started turning it up, and then I started turning it up. I started swapping tracks, and I started turning it up, and started turning it up. And now we're here, and I'm getting ready to fucking air guitar. Me and Steve Stevens... And Harold Faltermeyer just like this is this is special, all right. I don't want to call out, oh, it's my favorite I am, but I have to really I have to think about bills, and I got to think about the Monarch Mark III. I got to think about the Limited, the Prestige Limited. Probably is the closest competitor. People love when I compare things. Zeus, you didn't even compare it to a thing. Well, because if I had to compare everything to everything, I would literally have a nonstop 24-hour day of re-listening to things I've listened to to prepare myself to listen to things I have to listen to to listen to the listen to. And these could be just completely off the wall and not sound like anything I've ever listened to before, which is more akin to what they are. I don't think either one of the uh, Thyodas, the Limited or that, got this wide. Just straight up. I don't want them to fight. I want them all to coexist. I want you to think about the Prestige Limited, and I want you to think about the Monarch Mark III as their own little little bars. And this this one over here where the Dunu is sold, they serve nothing but Zima. All right? Yeah, it's a bar. Yeah, you can get drunk. It's just going to be a different type of drunk. Nothing against Zima lovers or Zima in general or these. God, did I just ruin them? I feel like... <sighs> Like, I, I always, you can see my face. I can put a mirror here just so you can see my fucking astonishment. Every time I hit next track, Bob Marley's Waiting in Vain remix. It's like there's a two and a half X enhancer on location data. Like, is this being recorded in a dense studio, in a live field, on a stage, in a room with slight echo? Whatever the place is. 200 times, 223% more of that is what you're getting. Even if it was completely flat and level and didn't have extra bass or high increased treble, none of that is going to make it what you want to buy. I don't want to buy these because of the graph. You can't measure what the fuck I'm hearing. You can't be like, oh, well, this look at this spike here. That means it's going to sound like Zeus is describing. There's nothing that could tell you this. Here, wait, right below that, I've got the um, Bon Iver, Bon Ivar. Please look this up yourselves. You're on YouTube, open a new tab, type in Bon Ivar, B-O-N space I-V-E-R, and then type in Air Studios, because they did a session on YouTube, and this is only available on YouTube, so I actually ripped the YouTube audio off and compressed it to flax so it wouldn't get damaged further. And it's the, the uh, Jaeger Wire sessions. And it's just 24 minutes and 45 seconds of... 
these two artists sitting at opposing pianos with vintage 1960s Neumann tube microphones that are worth like $80,000 each. They had like four of them in that studio. And despite YouTube quality, this is one of the greatest recordings mankind has put out. And it exists only in YouTube. If you can find a real copy of it, I'll fucking pay for it. I swear. But this track is just them sitting at pianos, facing each other. And there's these micro like 30 microphones of the pianos, and they're singing into these expensive Neumanns. And wait. Yep, this is the best this ever sounded. This is the best. This song was created for the Dunu Glaciers. Or the Dunu Glaciers were created for the song. Take your pick. Because there's it's just singing and there's this echo of this hall. And, you know, you notice it in every headphone and I am. You put a KPH 40s, you notice it. I'm tearing up from how much of that flavor you're getting. I, it, it should have been called the ice cave because it, it puts you in this space. It doesn't just, it's not like frozen. You know what? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out the word glacier. Here we go. What a glacier is, is a giant frozen mass. And that's what all music is because music is recorded. Therefore it is stagnant and and stable and unchanging just like a glacier is but then glaciers also move and cut the earth up and the glacier will cut into your heart and you will bleed tears of joy there you go boom put that in a fucking bullet point no i'm dead i'm dead ass these might be my favorite iams because they do the weird thing they remind me of eris a little bit which is the collab headphone because it's it's fucking with soundstage. It's the bigness. It's the spatial awareness that gets me. It's bass and that are the things I'm interested in. Can it produce low end? Which the answer is yes. They're thirteen hundred dollars. I can handle low end without being muddy or too bloated. But I don't give a shit. I don't care how many fucking dynamics or how many balanced armatures or how much electrostatic and what they're. They, I don't care. It's not my job to care. My job, all that I care about is what comes out of this little hole here. If what comes out of this hole is different and better than what came out of the last hole, then I'll recommend this hole. I'm recommending you these holes. Welcome to Inner Fetish, by the way. Um, I'm gonna, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. This video is probably like 22 minutes long already. But when you have like a life change of I am, you gotta just gotta spread the word. I'm gonna stop recording now. I'm gonna link to the glaciers. If you haven't been sold, you're not gonna be. If you don't have $1,300, don't worry. If you're looking for an end game I am, this is as close as Zeus will fucking point you to one of those. But I need to listen to the rest of this 24 minutes of music on the wall of and topaz or maybe i'll switch back to the thing and i need you all to be just 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 go away zeus is gonna have a moment and i'm gonna have it alone with my glaciers wallpaper in the horde patreon subscribe start support the channel thank you to my sponsor check out my sponsor links in the description there are actual sponsor links in every video uh usually it's linsole but it could change up it could be a coffee company it could be a, a dildo manufacturer i don't know whoever's willing to throw me money to keep the lights on like my patrons who keep the lights on. Um, you know, we're, we're gone. We're done. We're done. I'll see you in the next one, which will be not this. 45 minutes later, just in the dark. God, I love Glacier. Ah, uh, tube preying the speaker amp now. Ah, uh, I know.